Hey guys, Mitchell Smith here with Pike Consulting Group. We're with Captain Joe Rains with Head First Fishing Adventures, about to bring you another great video. It's a beautiful day, and we just want to take a moment to let you know if you have any safety or OSHA compliance questions, Pike Consulting Group has the solutions. Have you ever noticed that some species of fish are biting better than others at certain times of the year? Have you ever noticed that some species of fish are more prevalent at certain times of the year? That is often because of the association of prime water temperature. Hi, I'm Captain Joseph Rains, and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to talk about fish activity and water temperature ranges. You can use this video as kind of a cheat sheet quick guide on when you should be looking for certain types of fish. This video will be relevant to inshore game fish in the southeastern United States. After fishing inshore salt water for over 27 years, I've taken good note of what the best temperature ranges are for each species of popular game fish. The species of fish we're most concerned with are speckled trout, redfish, snook, kingfish, Spanish mackerel, cobia, and tarpon. First, let's establish some facts. Fish are generally cold-blooded and they'll need to adjust their location and situation at different times of the year to suit their needs. Different species of fish evolved in different locations around the globe and have different adaptations, or you could say little tweaks to their biology to help them deal with different ranges of temperature. Fish like salmon and trout have the ability to live in very cold temperatures. On the other end of the spectrum, fish like snook and peacock bass live in much warmer waters. Neither of those pairs of fish can trade places with the other. They can't tolerate it and they'll die. Water temperature can have a direct impact on fish metabolic rate, and this affects how active fish are and how much they can feed. My buddy Francois here, he needs warm water. He can't tolerate water much below 70 degrees. So we keep the thermostat adjusted accordingly. Dissolved oxygen content will dictate how much a fish can breathe, which is gonna dictate where he can live. Let's set a water temperature chart of about 40 degrees all the way up to 100 degrees. This 40 to 100 degree mark are the extreme unusual temperature ranges. Further in between those two ranges will be more typical water temperatures that you'll experience in the southeastern United States. Starting on the low end, Drumfish species like redfish and speckled trout, black drum, white trout, all those species have a better cold water tolerance. Hey Francois, can you pull up that webpage from Chesapeake Bay Magazine? Okay, boss. At the northern end of the range of the speckled trout, which also coincides mostly with redfish, speckled trout were killed off when the water temperatures dropped below 44 degrees. If the water doesn't warm up quick, those trout are dead. But still, that's pretty cold. That's a very cold water temperature to tolerate down to 45, 44 degrees. It would probably be reasonable to assume that even with a few more degrees of temperature above 44 or 45 degrees, the fishing is probably not the best. It would probably also be safe to assume that you will want a minimum temperature of about 50 degrees to catch these species of fish. Now let's jump up to 60 degrees and higher. It's a lot more fish activity once 60 degrees or more has been achieved. All the previously mentioned species of fish will be very active between 60 and 70 degrees. Once you get above 60 degrees sustained, snook start to become a factor, although much more slowly. 60 degrees is kind of the threshold for snook. They can survive right around 60 degrees, but they really need warmer water. If it stays below that for too long, metabolism slows down and they go belly up. When the water temperature jumps up to around 65 degrees, then you can start seeing some more significant snook activity. Trout and redfish will definitely be very happy in 65 degree water. You can catch them with ease. On an upward trend, the water climbing towards 70 degrees, snook activity is going to increase a lot. So once they feel that warmth start to come in, they're chewing a lot more. We're getting closer to 70 degrees. It's now 68 degrees. When I was growing up, 68 degrees was the magic number for cobia. And also, you start to see a lot of Spanish mackerel come around. Every spring in the northern Gulf of Mexico, we're coming out of winter, we're getting a few cold fronts here and there, but then we're starting to get some warm ups, spring breaks coming around, water temperatures climbing up. 68 degrees, 
You would see the pier fishermen with their cobia rods and their jigs. You'd see the tower boats going up and down the beach looking for those cobia. That spring warm up is a good time to look for cobia along the beaches. So now we're in the upper 60s, getting to around 70 degrees, seeing a few cobia, seeing some Spanish mackerel, catching Spanish mackerel. Now I'm starting to think king mackerel. King mackerel are associated with consistent temperatures over 70 degrees. When you've got that and you've got the bait fish have moved in, that's a recipe for king mackerel. So get your stinging rigs ready and get ready to drift some baits back. Truth be told, 70 degrees is the magic number for a lot of different species. Every species thus far will be loving 70 plus degree temperatures. They'll be chewing like crazy and they're easy to catch. Once we've gotten well into spring, the speckled trout will start to group up and spawn. Spring is when I'm catching most of my big female trout over 20 inches. Hey buddy, can you pull up that FWC article about spawning speckled trout? Jenny, pull that up. All right, give me a quick rundown of this FWC study. Basically, they went around Tampa Bay with acoustic recording devices, underwater hydrophones, and they found these schools of spawning speckled trout. Speckled trout are in the drumfish family and they make noises to communicate with each other. Specifically, they can use it to find each other and get into schools. So that's a, a cool feature of trout and redfish in the southeastern U.S. Fish in the drumfish family usually spawn in the evening, but various species do so at different times of the year. During the spotted sea trout spawning season, which typically starts in late March and ends in late September, scientists sample two nights a week. They lower the hydrophone into the waters in the passes, off nearby beaches, and all over Tampa Bay. At each sampling site, scientists noted temperature, salinity, dissolved oxygen, depth, and bottom type while recording fish sounds on a digital audio tape recorder. When positioned directly over an aggregation of fish, scientists could hear drumming through the bottom of the boat without the aid of the hydrophone. On summer evenings, boaters on Tampa Bay waters may be able to hear these remarkable sounds by putting their ear against the hull. Again, you will notice 70 to 80 degrees is the magic happy zone. Everything loves this temperature of water. You'll catch everything you want to catch between 70 and 80 degree water. As we get sustained mid 70 degree temperatures, tarpon are now a factor. Tarpon are gonna start schooling up, coming out of their hiding places and start moving out to the middle bay. You're gonna see them around the Skyway Bridge. They're gonna start stacking up in the pass. You're gonna get a few migratory schools coming from the south. Springtime Tampa Bay, big, big pods of tarpon coming into the bay whenever we have those sustained 70 degree temperatures. One thing you'll always notice, about the time we're through with those nasty early spring cold fronts, that's when you start seeing a lot of pictures of tarpon on social media. A lot of people will pivot from that spring kingfish bite into the tarpon bite as the water starts to approach 80 degrees. Tarpon will be prevalent from April all the way through July. From there, they will disperse and kind of thin out. A lot of the big migratory schools have moved on, but we always do have fish around. As we get up towards 80 degrees, a lot of fish are still very happy with the situation, but you will start to see some differentiation in behavior. As we crack 80 degrees and climb from there, kingfish are gonna go ahead and start thinning out. There's still gonna be some kingfish around throughout the summer, but the big thick schools of kingfish generally move on and find that happy zone for them between 70 and 80 degrees, following that temperature break and the bait pods. Spanish mackerel will be less affected and they seem to stick around regardless. Tarpon will certainly have no problem with water temperature that's climbing into the mid 80s. Redfish, snook, and speckled trout will still be a factor in the mid 80s, but their behavior might change a little bit. Water temperatures in this zone are often associated with fish movement and fish spawning. Once we're solidly into late spring, a lot of snook are gonna start gathering in the passes, barrier islands, and beaches, and they're gonna start spawning. You're gonna see a lot of big breeder snook there around Bunces Pass, about Pass a Grill, around Blind Pass, anywhere where there's a lot of current flow and those snook can spawn and their eggs can get sucked out to sea and dispersed and then come back in with the tide later. More and more redfish will be moving into the lower bay and then eventually the mature parts of their population will get together and start spawning around August. If you wanna find out more information about that, check out my video in the link above. Now we're well into summer, temperatures are climbing up to 90 degrees. 
this kind of changes the ball game a little bit. Fish may become more lethargic. Fish like redfish and snook, speckled trout, they may become a little bit lazier. One of the reasons for that is there's less oxygen in the water, especially in shallow water habitats. This is why a lot of people switch from live bait to cut bait fishing in the summertime. It does work mostly year round, but it's more effective it seems when the water temperatures are high, the fish need a little extra motivation from flavor and scent to take the bait. If the water temperature keeps climbing into the mid 90s, the fish have a situation on their hands where they're gonna to have to make a move to find food and water that won't kill them. There are upper and lower extremes of water temperature that fish can handle. And in general, if that temperature keeps on climbing into the mid and upper 90s, that's a bad scenario for most game fish. Tarpon may be an exception to that because they do have that primitive lung that allows them to gulp and breathe air. It is known that tarpon can live in some stagnant backwaters that other fish just simply can't take. I hope this video was helpful. Be sure you're taking notes out there when you're out there fishing. If you got everything else lined up, make sure you got the water temperature right. You should be catching fish. Make notes of how your trip went. Make notes of what you're catching at different conditions. Make a log of that. And over time, you really start to see what's what out there on the water. Thanks for coming by Head First Fishing. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification button, and I'll see you later.